out of her wallet. But there has to be a realization that if, if we were all retirees, you know, more than half of the income would disappear to provide services. Well, and it, like you said, how is there a tracking trend on so many percent each year retiring in the village? You know, is that a track? I don't know if we have demographic information that deep. Right. I would Not doubt really. that. Well, the only reason I say that is it does paint the picture of what you're facing if things don't change. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Okay. Okay, anyway, so we'll have a total comparison of all the years, but the one in the newspaper was 2011, so that's why he interviewed that one first. With Ann Rowley? Yes, yeah, yeah, from um, our discussion. Yeah. And you'll title, you'll put that yes. on that. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And then the, yeah, the second page of that packet is the fund summary, which again will show you our starting fund balances in each fund, and then you know, it just shows month-to-date revenue, year-to-date revenue, and then month-to-date expenditures, year-to-date expenditures. <coughs> and the last column, our unencumbered fund balance, that's what we actually have available right now for expenditure in each fund. There's a slight deficit in the unencumbered fund balance for, I think it's police. police. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we've got bills sitting here and we don't have revenue in that fund to match those bills? Well, Is it just means that we, um, I may have, when I write purchase or, orders, I'm trying to write purchase orders for longer periods of time. Okay. So it just means that, you know, maybe I've written the purchase order for 12 months and, and we don't have, you know, we're still getting advances on the property taxes. So. Okay. It just has to do with the purchase orders. It just saves me from having to do, you know, for four purchase orders a year. I'd rather just take the time and do one for the whole year and get it out of the way. <clears throat> um, when do you encumber something? At, at what point? Like we have um, when non. Someone, when uh, someone does a purchase request. Okay. Like we, if I'm looking at. Um, the non-voted debt bond payment this year, it's whatever number it is. Um, somebody had it here. That's a different... 355. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I know it was no. three and change. <laughs> Nobody actually does a purchase request right. for that, <laughs> um, you know, because it's its own, its own account. So that money isn't actually encumbered, I think, until... It's a do. I mean, last year I had no idea when we to even expect a bill. I mean, it was my, you know, my first year here, so that money was encumbered. I guess about the time that I got the bill, because I don't think I would have had any advance notice on that. But that money couldn't be used for anything. Else, yeah, it can't so be it used. It isn't like it's a different we would yeah. tap it or something. Right. In error. It's you always there. You can only that. use it for that. Yeah. Right, because uh, like right now we're sitting at one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in that fund, correct? Mm -hmm. But we don't have anything for an encumbrance, but that's fine because we don't. We can't spend it anyway. Right. It's it's there for one purpose. Okay. Yeah. Um, if somebody asks you the question, you got 525 in the general fund that's unencumbered, um, does that mean that we have a half a million dollars we don't know what to do with? No, because we still need to save some more to be where we, we need, need to, be, to be to be protected for when even aside from the whole debt, even if we didn't have our debt, we still need to have that higher. Right, because we're talking, and, and for carryover. Yeah, and, and actually, Covers that's something that's yeah. that's what I want to put in the one of the things I want to put on the agenda for our next meeting is is what is our target amounts for um, yeah, the policy for, for fund for carryover fund balances. Which is that forward thinking that mm -hmm. you're referring to? Sure. I mean, you, you would be, um, I don't want to say foolish, but I'm saying foolish if you ran your business or my business or your whole household or my household, and on December 31st, you zeroed everything out. Yeah. How would you survive the first three months of the year? Yeah. And then if revenues aren't there in January, and then you've got February bills, yeah. and then, yeah, no, you, you can't operate a government. 
Yeah, and I actually, I did hit that situation in the um, police levy account. And it's, it's quite a predicament to be in. Well, especially when there's funds are allocated the way they are. Yeah, yeah. And again, in my opinion, our, our debt situation just kind of magnifies that. Not only should we be having that comfortable balance there in case of emergencies or loss of revenue, we need to have it there to cover our debt. So Absolutely. And, and um, we, am I correct that we're still an unrated municipality from a bonding standpoint? We, we don't carry a, a debt rating. That's correct. So our um, fund balances would be even more closely scrutinized by somebody if we're going to refi mm -hmm. debt. Um, Kim, I will periodically ask you one word opinions. Um, okay. Are you, um, where we're sitting right now, do you have any angst about anything? Are you, would you say you're uncomfortable, uncomfortable, concerned about on the revenue side? Expenses are the only thing that I, that, you know, that Yvonne and I talked about is the, you know, the police levy is a little bit, you know, we're expecting less money and we're and that could be in a better situation, you know, we could be, but I don't know what we can do about that. I don't know what the answer is, but there's a little all? concern there. I mean, how much <laughs> we were expecting 505, and I think our I think last year was like either 535 or 545, and this year it's 505. Yeah, yeah. But, and all of our other levies went down too. I mean, that was just, we had a lot of operations in there, but the, the fire levies are down significantly. Um, even recreation is down mm -hmm. significantly over the last year. Do you remember how and much that's we because had? property values are down, correct? Correct, yes. Uh, help me understand this. Um, if, if the valuation on all of Green Hills property, which is like 63 million in that range, mm -hmm. Okay, but let's say it goes down, the total valuation goes down 1%. How come some funds go down more than 1%, some go down 1%, whatever? It seems to me that if that is, if the property valuation is the parameter that's used to determine the tax, and that's the only thing changing, shouldn't those funds change all 1% of them? Or, or is that like more than anybody can explain yeah, here? I, say, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe I'll have to go see Dusty himself <laughs> to explain that. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. They give us a number and we just use that number. We all, I mean, obviously if it was hugely erratic, we would get down and meet with them and question the number, but okay. And they did indicate in their letter um, back in September when they gave us these percentages that uh, they were being conservative. So obviously we're using their numbers because we want to be conservative too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully it will be higher than we're thinking. Well, that, yeah, that's why we were talking about re, you know, taking a look back mid-year, mm -hmm. June or July, and seeing did we actually get more money than we planned to get and are we in a position mm -hmm. you know, to do increases or anything like that. So. And, and even in this one, um, you know, our, our property tax was actually higher than we thought it would be. Last year, so that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it won't be too devastating. Mm -hmm. So, our actual exceeded our projection. Yes. In 2011. Yes. On the property tax side. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But our estimate for 2012 is down from that because they're and estimating that it will be down. And, and I'm not saying that we ought to change anything, but um, intuitively, I think I think it's going to be better. Good, we like that. <laughs> Mister, call me Mr. Positive. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mine may not we'll be personally, it. but uh, I think collectively the village will. That's, um, I wish I could hold you to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wishing good things for you, too. Yeah, and good. you and you. <laughs> um, I'll probably... I may pick up the phone with a question or two, but uh, um, I think we're fine. Yeah. Good. So we're going to do Yeah. Um, let's talk about next meeting. Are there any things that we want to... Um, I, I don't want to set a date yet. I, I think meeting every other month 
seems frequent enough. We can meet more frequent if there was a need. But um, I'd like to establish some goals for year-end fund balance. Okay. Um, I want to look and make sure that the council report is working. You know, okay. if we have to tweak something, they have to tweak something. Okay. Um, and then when I talked to you, you were talking about improving the PO process. So maybe next time you can just give an update as to how that's going. Okay. What did, can you translate that for me? Yeah, we, um, <laughs> I don't think um, we were using our purchase orders. Um, you know, when I started here, there wasn't, first of all, there wasn't a purchase request form. It didn't exist. A purchase order was generated, you know, when my, um, when, you know, Kathy would be standing in the hallway and hear people talking about going to buy something. I think she'd come upstairs based upon what she was hearing, you know, and sometimes write a purchase order. There was no actual request form okay. being used. Um, and then, so I created a request form, sent it out to everybody to start using, but I think you know, some people were in such a habit of not having to do a purchase request right. or a purchase right. order that it didn't pick up very quickly. But I do see it picking up okay. more now. People are, you know, starting to use it, understanding the importance of it. Um, so I think it's getting better and we're moving in the right direction. It just that old force of habit that sure. is something sure. you didn't have to do before and now it's an additional piece of paperwork and people feel yeah. like it's a pain. But yeah. it's but it's the right way to handle it. Absolutely. And it's going to help us cash flow yeah. wise for yeah. sure and projection wise. And, and we're coupling that with now that we have the detail in the budget that the department heads will have that figure. They will know exactly what we have put money in there for. And if they don't see it on the list, they shouldn't do a requisition for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, you know, they will be taking on more responsibility in terms of keeping their budgets in check. One exercise I'd like to do sometime <laughs> at a future meeting um, is, I, I hate doing this because it's kind of negative, but I really like doing it because um, it <laughs> clarifies priorities really quickly, is um, an exercise where we would look at the general fund and say, if we had a calamity and all of a sudden we had to cut $100,000, what would we do? And how deep would the pain be? Um, you see so that all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> I just take it. I, I think that that's part of our fiduciary duty to be prepared for something like that. I, so, if we had to cut a hundred thousand, is there a what would we reason do? you picked a hundred thousand? Um. We can go bigger if you'd like. Um, I mean, it's about six or seven percent. Um, if we got, I think if we had to cut a number larger than that, we'd have all the council involved in the question real quick. I mean, if we got to a hundred thousand, we would have to do that too. Right. Right. Um, and I don't. I mean, I, my intent in doing that is not to um, alarm anybody or announce it at the next meeting that you know we did this exercise and just for instance it's suppose it said so suppose it said we got to the conclusion we'd run without a manager we would never do that but suppose that was the answer I don't want the person that could be affected saying holy crap they did a what-if scenario and now I can't sleep at night I, that's right. not the intent sure yeah. no it's it's sure. actual emergency preparedness it's it, really exactly it is well, it is, and, and you know, to a large extent, I, I definitely something worth doing because, again, it, you know, we were lucky to get some revenues, but if you know, the trend is down on income tax and <laughs> you know, terrible, so yeah, gotta be prepared. We yeah, have right. to be thinking what, and, and we are always internally thinking that 
what's another step? What's another step? Because the, at some the point, more though, we can keep it down now and, and do better and be sure. more efficient, the but less maybe we'd have to take drastic measures. But And, and I don't want, or I don't believe you can shrink to success. No. I high five you. And, right. And in the spirit, and whether I agree totally or disagree with the governor, in the spirit of shared services, I think that's another kind of, maybe we do a little activity on that sometime in the future too. Well, and, and the only thing, and, and it's, um, I, I just want to plant the seed with that, there's a halo effect of certain things. I, I'm very much for looking just at the hard numbers, but there's a lot of other things that can be affected um, that we, I think we should take into consideration. Now, they might be in the range of 20%, 30%, you, you know what I mean? But I do think there's other factors in, sure. in that mix yeah. that I would hope you would um, consider. I did have a, a thought uh, as far as un understanding what other communities are doing. And the, again, pardon me if this is a naive question, but is there any way to understand, and maybe maybe it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's a given, it's all income tax, it's all the businesses. Do we know what other communities do as far as how they're receiving their funds? And the only reason I say that is, I often, you know, professionally we'll do an exercise that seems like, I know how to wash dishes, and then you start analyzing the process, and it's like, well, I had no idea, <laughs> I did this, this, and this. Well, I just wondered if we can find um, and start to learn how other communities might have little nuances. Not, not you know, they need to be above board. I'm not saying service charges, oh, you know, other communities are doing that. But just like you were saying on the um, mandatory tax filing and things like that, um, just looking at other communities and seeing where they're drawing their income from and, and learning from that. If, if possible, that, absolutely. I, you know, I that's, that's always worth while. Well, it, it yeah. is, and I, I know. Anytime I go to manager stuff, she goes to finance stuff. That that's where you really learn okay. a bundle about what's being done. Sure. Yeah, and, and if people, are, it's interesting. People, other communities are resorting to some interesting things. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, we have to think about. Well, park, yeah, park, yeah. It's just uh, you know, well, it's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, we we really push it. And and Greenfield our Township's our charging there. youth athletic leagues for use of ball fields right Which and, is, and they opened up a um a um what do you call that when you get your car towed uh, uh impound, impound lot yeah, yeah. and they're making a lot of money off of an impound lot so yeah. there was some creative thought process that went into it, all those ideas sorry. no go ahead <laughs> You're fine. well the other thing too to your earlier point though is and it's hard to to um there's a gravitational pull to certain things, and I, and I think we should look at those like, hmm, is there other places that we can responsibly charge for that's very, um, you know, not charging. Us paying the cost of someone's ticket because they want to pay with a credit card, paying that fee makes no sense to me whatsoever, so that's why we're doing something about it. But I, I would see it in buckets of, there's things that we maybe should be charging for that we've never charged for because we have to. Um, but there's also probably proactive things that can fall um, into, uh, I don't know, more, and I don't have a good example off the top. The example I think of is like when you go to Kroger and they spray the produce and the customer goes, oh wow, that looks so great. Well, that's kind of interesting. You're putting about the heaviest thing you can on something that's paid for, for by weight. You know, so, um, but both parties seem to be very happy about that scenario. They might not be. They might not be thinking about it. But, um, but the point is that it's it's not only from a charging standpoint, but it's like, wow, you know, we build up a, a farmers market and people love it and and people are coming and people are willing to pay a fee or whatever that that is fully justified well my idea was to start charging for parking for like the festivals and stuff like that. well i know that my <laughs> my grandparents live right up from the hall of fame and every yard makes a ton of money during yep. the hall of fame game <laughs> so. yep yep i i think we that's to me it, I welcome you to bring that idea on March 7th for the community development in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already doing the promotion. <laughs>
Good, good, good. Um, anybody else have anything? Okay. Very good. I will um, get some minutes to the clerk. Hearing no other business, I will adjourn this meeting as the chair. Thanks for your work. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.